and welcome to this module on fleet optimization. My name is Tim Vermeil and today I want to tell you a little bit on how to optimize your electric bus fleet. And so what things you have to consider and how can you optimize your fleet in a simple way. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Yes, there we are. So my name is Tim Vermeil. I work at VDL Bus & Coach, which is a manufacturer of electric buses and also coaches in the Netherlands. Uh, in my role as commercial project manager, I am mainly involved in the commercial process of electric public transport buses for Denmark, Italy, the Middle East, and also Eastern Europe, depending on what kind of projects are going on over there. And a big part of my job is talking to the customers and thinking on how to design your system of electric bus, which was one of the previous videos that I made, uh, and also how to optimize your service and your operation of the vehicles on chargers, on data connection, on grid connections, etc. So that's what I do at VDL. And VDL itself, as I said, manufactures buses and coaches. So, for example, this VDL Futura, uh, but also the new generation Citea public transport bus that we designed completely from scratch and that will be built in a completely new factory that we are building at this moment in Roeselare in Belgium. We also do conversions on Mercedes Sprinters and uh, uh, e-crafter vehicles. We do the electric truck together with DAF, which has the driveline of our bus, and some innovation projects on hydrogen range extenders that you can connect to a bus or an electric truck. Optimized fleet. So there are like a million things to think about with optimized fleet that will uh, that range from the calculations that you do on the energy consumption, smart way of charge, uh, charging buses, uh, all the way to uh, smart charging, depot layout and all kind of things. I will cover a few subjects during this presentation so you get some basis and then with your own creativity you can think of many other things to optimize your fleet. Uh, three simple steps. First of all, system specification, the other video that I did, what kind of bus do you need, what battery size do you need, what type of chargers do you want, and what's the charging location that you can use. Then another big step is energy consumption calculation to see what's the energy consumption of our bus, preferably on worst case conditions, because you have to drive every day, not only the best, but also the coldest or the warmest days. Um, and then the last part, our driver and bus scheduling. So how can we schedule the bus in a smart way that you get some uh, charging time or you can use the driver brakes, the coffee brakes or lunch brakes to charge your buses and maybe therefore also reduce the grid connection that you need to have, for example. Within Visual Bus and Coach, we always start with the analysis of the root data that the customer sends us to see what's the energy consumption, how to charge, so that's more or less the system uh, specification. Then we, we calculate the operation um, that the customer can do, how does the total day of operation looks like and what you see for difference between the buses and how to optimize that. Then of course we implement that solution, we test it together with the customer and then daily operation start. And even after daily operation you can think of many ways to optimize your fleet. To show you an example of what we do within VDL is this, um, this example of the route calculation that I do for my customers. And in this case you see uh, this kind of graph of the operation. Every line represents a bus and in this calculation there are 12 different buses driving a total of 3,141 kilometers. You notice that there are quite some buses driving the whole day and then at the end of the day we return to the depot to have an overnight charging session. Some buses drive during the rush hour in the morning then go back to the depot and wait until the rush hour in the afternoon to start operation again and have a charging in the depot as well. So this is only a depot charging operation but with two different types of buses. Buses driving all day and buses driving only in the rush hour. What then is noticeable are a few things is that you have some buses driving only 100 kilometers, while there are also buses driving more than 300 kilometers a day. Something else to notice is that in general, the depth of discharge that you might have is 80 or 90 percent, depending on the battery. Let's assume 80 percent. That means that in this calculation, at least two buses are uh, outside of the depth of discharge bandwidth. So we have to solve that issue uh, and you 
can maybe also solve something about the small uh, kilometers that some of the buses do. This is an example of how the time schedule can look like what that, that we get from the customer with all the trips from point A to point B. And this is an overview of the charger operation. So this bus operation will result in this charger operation on the depot. This peak is the overnight for the, the charging during the morning. And this is in the end of the evening and the night charge of all the buses. So it shows that in the morning you need five chargers and in the evening you would need 10 chargers to charge the 12 buses that we have in this operation. In total, you need 500 kilowatt hours as a peak uh, grid connection at one point, which is very simply just the 10 chargers that we have active at the same time, times 50 kilowatt hours of, depri, uh, of depot charging power, which also in 500. Then I want to show you a slightly optimized version of the calculation that I just showed you. I say slightly optimized because there are like a thousand things you can do to optimize the fleet and just, just to show you the, the basic steps to start thinking of optimizing fleet in a creative way. So what I did in this bottom version, which is the slightly optimized one, is first of all that you, you see that the two buses that go below the 20% are now not there anymore. You might also notice that there are some more lines charging in the morning session and there are two buses starting to drive halfway the morning beginning of the afternoon which are not here as well. What I did, I changed the buses that go below the 20% somewhere in the end of the afternoon with two buses that are fully charged in the morning after their rush hour morning drive because they are standing still at the depot for a long time and they can also be used during that time. So I switched those buses uh, somewhere around here and one here that, um, yeah, well, that take over the 20% buses. This also results in this bus six that was only driving 104 kilometers, now is driving a bit more. So that will also spread out the, the average mileage on each bus more, so you will get a more um, more linear mileage on your all your buses. Then, secondly, what I also did is I delayed the charging sessions, and that's something that you can see. That's too quick, sorry. As you can see on the charging operation, in the original version we used ten chargers during the afternoon session. Uh, now we only use eight chargers. And this is mainly because I have delayed the start of the charging session of the bus. In this version, every single bus that arrives to the depot uh, over here, but also here in the, in the evening, at this line, will start charging immediately. Of course, this is not necessary because you have quite a lot of time to charge. As you can see, in the original version, all the buses are charged at five o'clock and in the slightly optimized version at four. So now we only need eight chargers because not all of them will charge at the same time. Some will wait a little bit and even you can optimize that further. As you see, there is a, already a decrease to five just um, at 11 o'clock. And then after two o'clock, there is more or less all the buses stop charging because they are full. So this peak, you could also move to the back. And then maybe you need only five chargers. That's something I didn't do in this slightly optimized version because there are a lot of different ways how to achieve this with uh, more advanced software that the customer use on scheduling their buses. Uh, yeah, it's just to show you the two options that I did. So changing buses to reduce the amount of driving time and reduce the charging time. A different thing to notice that's really important for customers uh, is the peak that you need on the energy on the grid connection. This is only 12 buses. Uh, so it's not too much, but still we reduced from 500 to 400. If you can spread out this charging peak a bit more, only go to five, then you might even need only 250 kilowatt at the same time uh, on your depot. So in that way, you can really optimize your grid connection. Uh, and the higher the grid, grid connection, the more expensive it tends to be. This is only 12, but imagine when you have five no, not well, maybe not 500, but if you have 100 electric buses running at the same time, charging in the same depot, 
managing the start of the charging session is really important. To do that, there is also something called smart charging. And smart charging means a lot of different things, but in general, it's thinking on when to charge, how to charge, how long, and with what kind of charging power. Uh, quite often there is a software that can control the buses or the chargers to delay the start of the charging session or to have a uh, different charging power for each bus. So in this example, uh, you could think about having buses that need to start at 8 o'clock to have them charge with 50 kilowatts. Other buses that start at 10 o'clock you can charge with 20. Because why would you charge a bus with 50 kilowatts if it then waits in the depot for 3 hours until the start? of the operation and maybe a bus that has to start even earlier at seven o'clock you will charge with 100 but then you need software to control the chargers and you need to have chargers that are dynamic in the charging power that they provide to the charge but those solutions do exist uh, like many more solutions that you have also on the layout of this depot the way how the chargers are linked to the buses one charger charging multiple buses at the same time, there are many things you can think of. In conclusion, to optimize your fleet, first of all, you have to design your transport system. What kind of bus battery chargers do I want to have? Calculate consumption, then maybe also optimize the design of your transport system that you had in the first place. Then reschedule and optimize the usage of your buses, the timetable, uh, maybe optimize the layout of your depot. Do you want to charge with a plug, with a pentagraph, all those kind of things. And then in the end, you could also think on introducing smart charging systems to the chargers, to the buses, to optimize things like the start of the session, the charging power, uh, but also preheating or pre-cooling the interior of the bus to reduce the energy that you need. But those are one of the many things that you can do. So be creative on how to optimize your fleet uh, as well many ways to go ahead so interesting stuff thank you very much for your time uh, i hope this helped in starting to think about optimizing the fleet how you can approach that and i wish you all the best with designing your own fleet for your own city or region thank you very much